This is a neat little detail that you get after doing the whole thing in the Rosemary Mansion. The ghosts aren't gone yet, but what a brave boy you are. I renamed my son Ninten after you. Hey there, other Ninten. Hi there, my name is Ninten. It used to be Bug Error Rosemary. Your parents didn't like you very much, did they? I just immediately get reminded of Zelda 2 with I Am Error. Which game came out first, actually? I'm not sure. We're now gonna head back to the train station, and we're gonna head back to Union. We were told by that person just outside the Snowman train station that we would head back to Union at some point, and now is that time. Also, you can kind of infer that this is where we need to go, because Anna had mentioned we need to solve some sort of mystery happening in Youngtown right now. And yeah, and if we go ahead and look at the map, Youngtown, Union Station's train is supposed to lead there. Although, as you will see, it currently does not because this bridge is taken out, so we're gonna have to walk. We've had the luxury of the train for quite a while now, but it's time to go back to our adventuring routes and just take the long way, you know? As we head over this way, the music begins to change and we are now in Yucca Desert, a brand new area of the game with rattlesnakes, robots, and it's very barren. Most of the enemies here I just feel like running away from most of the time. Although we do have a few important things we need to keep an eye out for here in the in the desert. We have this frankly horrifying robot lady here. Here amongst these cacti, you may notice this one here looks a bit different than all of them. Let's go ahead and see what's up with this cactus. Wait, a voice is speaking into Nintendo's mind, and we know exactly what that dialogue means. Telepathy. The cactus sang. And for whatever reason, it kept on singing. So that's right, our next piece of the melody is from this cactus here in the Yucca Desert. Also, we have some bones down here. Conversing with a corpse? What a brave kid. I'm almost certain that at some point when you can talk with these bones here, the bones will say, This is Yucca Desert, the most boring part of the game. Although I'm not really sure how you trigger that dialogue. I've never seen it, at least myself. I'll throw up a screenshot of it right here. We have this gentleman. Uh, by a plane. During the last war, I laid mines in the desert. I removed all but one of them, so watch your step. Oh, you want to ride on the plane? Well, sure, we'll ride on the plane, and he offers multiple different flights here. And as I'll say here, uh, after we pay the, the flights, he's going to give us ticket stubs, one for each party member, and after we get ten of them, we get his tank. So, this is kind of a repetitive and unnecessary part of the game, but we have to do at least four flights. I know what you're thinking. He only offers us three different ones. Uh, yep. You're gonna have to repeat at least one of them. And if you want to save the most money, then you're gonna just repeat the first one over and over. These ticket stubs will also fill our inventory, so even though Anna does make it more expensive being here, we also kind of need Anna's inventory so that we can hold 12 of these things, because he will not allow us to fly without room for 12. But at least we get to see some stuff here. We see some ruins off to the to the right. And we also, that's where we could see the weird cactus at first, in case you hadn't found it yet. You know what, let's just do all of the flights for the sake of experimentation and showing them off in the Let's Play. So flight B here. It appears he's going far, far left of the desert. Oh man, we're not even touring the desert anymore. You completely left, dude. Um... Oh man, would you look at where he's taking us. That was Pippi's house down there, and yeah, that was our house with a dog house and everything. Here's the zoo. It's neat to have a little look back at some areas of the game we've been to before. Lastly, let's take a look at the third and final flight plan he offers us. $45, oh well, you know what? We, we got money to spare. Some sort of tower up there. And also as we travel down here, there's a path. Even further south, we have what appears to be the railway connecting to Youngtown, the one we can't currently access. Here you go, dude. Have a ticket stub. Great, I see you saved ten stubs. Take my tank. You sure look happy. <laughs> it's incredible that he just gives us his tank. We're just kids, after all. Also, I didn't notice this in the last recording, but the plasma beam is still here, the one that we used on the Starman. So that's kind of neat, knowing that we can use it more later on. And yes... We are actually in a tank. There's no enemy encounters. I'm assuming we're just rolling over all those guys we were encountering before. We need to make our way over to the ruins we saw in Flight A. Also, an important detail, as you can see, the tank cannot leave the desert, so we're just kind of trapped here. I do like that we have this little snazzy theme playing, and as we enter the, the uh, desert ruins here, we are attacked by 
R7037. Yeah, the name doesn't quite roll off the tongue, but this is a boss encounter. Although, because we are in a tank, all of the attacks that he tries to do on us will bounce back and hit it. We also are firing from the tank gun, which as you can see does a great amount of damage. I do wish there were some more animation and character to this bit, like all of it is just in the text there, as a lot of RPGs handle their combat. Instead, we just kind of have to use our imagination. The robot hits the tank, and it bounces back, which hurts the robot. And then Lloyd, Nintendo, and Anna are all firing the different guns. Or I guess the one gun, all at the same time. Are they all like huddled in the seat or something? Like, that's kind of hilarious. Although the tank is broken from this encounter. Uh, let's try to avoid going back to that military guy and just head onward. Hey there. Most monkeys will lie to you here. Beware. So, uh, yeah, this is the Monkey Grotto, and it's filled with monkeys. As that first one warned, a lot of these people will be lying to us. I've got a good story to tell you. Wanna hear it? Sure. Well, you should be nice to friends. That's all I've got to say. What a story, Mark. In the town by the sea, you'll meet a new friend. Well, we were told you were lying, so I'll just carry on without thinking much about that. Retreat, and if you don't want to, go back. Oh, never mind, go forward. I'm getting conflicting messages here. Hey there. You caught up with me. I'll admit that's something. Here, I'll give you something nice. And they give us... a quick capsule. Appropriate, since we apparently caught up with them. Although I'm not sure what you mean by that. Maybe this is the monkey in the zoo, from the beginning of the game. Or maybe it's just very confused. I wouldn't be surprised either way. Um... Let's get away from that monkey and never speak to it again. Don't believe that all monkeys are liars. That's nothing but a lie. I suppose so. I'm the boss monkey. I'm really annoyed that the others tell so many lies. Go straight ahead and you'll find an exit to your right. Thanks, boss monkey. I, uh, uh... This is a big mistake. I really shouldn't have come here. <laughs> There's a penguin just hanging out in their midst. What? Do I look like a monkey? I mean, you are one, so by that sense, y yes. I'm really a raccoon pretending to be a monkey. What? What the fuck? What about you, guy in the corner? I'm a quiet monkey. I don't talk much. You see... Here we have our exit, and we're not just taken back out to Yuka Desert, but instead we're taken to another one of these stones that leads us to Magicant. With that, we're back here in Magicant, and you might ask yourself, what was the point of that? 